Hi ladies and gents, this is Irene and um, I was cleaning my books. What I mean by cleaning is after a while when they're stacked up on top of each other and you have five cats, they do get rather messy and what's the word? Accidents happen on them sometimes and they get a bit sticky. Not, not we like, you know, other things like maybe vomit or whatever or hair and yeah so basically I spray and wiped them and cleaned them and um, after that I thought okay I'll do a little show and tell for you guys and show you what I've got so I've got about 20 floral books that I'd like to share with you so this one is the concise Australia flora and um, these were found at various thrift stores um, ranging from a couple of dollars up to maybe five dollars maybe even ten dollars depending on the book um, yeah. so this one is from the 90s and what I liked early 90s or 89 89. So what I liked about this, and I thought a good way to use these, is you've got a picture here and a picture here. And instead of folding it, you can fold it and have it the right way up. But the thing is, that side is good, but that side is writing. So I've been racking my brain and I thought, come up with an idea of cutting it here and cutting it there and then joining them so they're like after you join them they'd be like that and then imagine putting that in your journal and trimming it to here a bit to fit the journal and then that will be the first second third fourth so it's all pictures and i've got all this to play with and i'm like oh my gosh lucky me so you can do autumn i love the orange autumn colored it's more kind of shrubs going back here so this is all about australian flowers and then at the front it's more about color i think birds of paradise yeah beautiful wattles Oh, this is a strain flower. Boss, no. Cyrus, no. Yeah. Gorgeous. So it's a beautiful book. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is called. The Concise Australian Flora by Leonard Cronin. If anyone's interested, looking that up. I'm sure there's sites you can get that from. Hold on. Stop it. That's why you get scratches on you. My Australian Bull Terrier. Sit down here. Come on, sit down. He always wants to sit with a cat, but he ends up scratching. Come on, put your big bum up there. Boys, boy, sexy boy. Come on, I'll show you. Say hi to my friends. Look at my sexy boy. Look at your sexy eyes. Are you a sexy boy? Yes, you're a sexy boy. Is your mama sexy boy? Mm. <laughs> These dogs are known for their tough skin so he can handle the cat sticking its claws in there and stuff. Oh, boy. Alright. My little Australian boy terrier. He's 10 months old. He's a beautiful boy. He's a shitty boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> So this one is another beauty, it's a 
a collection of Australian wildlife illustrations by Patricia Weir. And it's got a lovely kind of velvet type. Why are you so sexy? Why are you such a sexy boy? <laughs> I can't get rid of it. No, inside it looks like that. Come on, sweetheart. Mommy has to do You sit over here, my little sexy boy. Look at me. I always call him my sexy boy. <laughs> he gets more physical love from me than my partner does. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? Look at this. Oh my gosh. When I saw this at my savers, I frothed. Oh, and my nails. These are fake nails that I put on, painted them and did my blends. I am just hanging to get my nails done, but we're in COVID restrictions. So it's on my own. But that'll, that'll probably come off soon. So where's this? 1984. Um, I love how it's like an ivory colour, so it's not stark white, don't have to worry coffee down. It's not gorgeous. Look at that. Look beautiful book. I, it's such a beautiful book, unless I've got a second copy, I don't see myself ripping it up. I know, not bad. Um, I could see myself scanning it, but my printer's giving me grief. I need, I need ink. But I just really need to put my foot down and use my books instead of putting them. It's not beautiful. June, if you're doing a specific month, this is May, you can fold that in half, June, what you can do is actually cut that out and use it, you know when you do a front cover, stick that on your front, not the front, the inside of the front to cover or whatever you're covering. Or it can be a center page. Like this one here would be good folded in half. You can cut it like that and then fold it in half. So you have one page that, one page that, and then on the other page you still have some flowers. This one here can be folded and cut it along there and then that will be one page and this will be another page and on this side because it will be folded, that will be one, and that will be another page. So that's what's awesome about this book, but it's such a beautiful book, I don't see I can bring myself to carve at it. I'm just trying to see if there's a price on it. Like this part, oh, it's beautiful. A Kevin Weldon production by Patricia Lee Weir. W-E-A-R-E, -E, a collection of botanical illustrations. Patricia Weir. So there's that one. And then there's this one. This is from 1956 or 8. And you can use the cover, Wildflowers of Australia. There's, I don't know if you can see that here. It's, um... like a image of something like a flower very slight because it's old and this is a clipping from the year i was born 79 and the month is and the day is when my 12 year old son was born the 2nd of november so i would have been a nine month old baby when this came out it's just about the plants and stuff. And this was the weekend of Friday, November the 2nd. The weekend of 
I'll ask my mum if she recalls a paper called The Little Kingdom. And there's even a cult and address here. Dorothy Ann Les Delta. It's 251 Canning Street Cult. And I know that address. Oh my God, I had a friend that lived Canning Street. And there's some flowers there. This is 1958. So, let's show you. This is the, the, oh, this? oh, this was written in 49. <gasps> Something by, oh, she talks about the plants. Oh my gosh. Hothead, August, something by MP, Bowden, Cowdy Bay, Patreon, Siberia, Purple, Nature. Oh, that's all flower names. It's a real kind of, I don't know if you can see from here. Fancy writing. Pretty sure that says the date 28th of August 49. Or it could be 79. Yeah. It's 79 actually. Yes, I imagine it is 79 because this was from 79. Wow. And look at these beautiful images. I don't know how I can bring myself to use these. I, I'd, I'd love to hear if you would cut this, cut this book and use these. But wouldn't it be perfect? You can have it facing this way. Do you know what I mean? Or you can fold it and have it that way. And both sides have got flowers, so that's incredible. Oh my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, look at the images back there. You can tell it was printed back then. It's almost like a 3D, like it's coming at you. Really pretty. This is called um, Karandrina Hill. And this is a small shrub of the northern coastal districts of New South Wales and of Queensland. I live in Victoria. All those states mentioned Victoria and New South Wales, Queensland, they're on the east coast of Australia. So where I live in Victoria is on the bottom. And then New South Wales is in the middle and then Queensland is at the top and that's like the east coast and then on the west coast all of one side is called Western Australia and in the central or middle on the lower part you've got South Australia and on the top you've got Northern Territory and on the back to the east coast if you go down, even on Victoria, we've got an island down there called Tasmania. So yeah, bit of education there for our American friends and European friends and um, English friends. Mm. It's a lovely book. It's just going to be hoarded till the day I die, probably. You know, it might scan the images as soon as my mojo goes up there along with my colours for my printers, get some of them. The Illustrated Language of Flowers. Got my nails, my fake nails put on yesterday and I put some nail polish and some blings.
We're in stage four restrictions in Victoria, so everything is shut except for major places like food joints and pharmaceutical places. So I'm just hanging to get my nails done, so I just blend them out a little. Right, so this is the language of flowers. It's still in very good condition. Let's see, this is from early 90s. Ninety-two. Most of these would have come from Savers. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful angels. Oh, wow, the sacred flower. What's that called? My mum really likes these flowers. Flower in the cranny wall, a little flower. Doesn't say the name of freaking flower. In sacred literatures of both the east and the west, where paradise is promised, the image given is a garden rich with flowers, flower reference occurring Hindu, Muslim and Buddhist scriptures. You can tell this is American the way they pronounce Muslim. We say Muslim and we spell it M-U-S-L-I-M but the Americans do it M-O-S. So instead of pronouncing it Muslims, they pronounce it Muslims. Muslims. <laughs> so it sounds really American saying Muslims. Um, really liked American accent. And Buddhist scriptures. And in connection with the lives of Christian saints. Flower fragrance or heaps of flowers have been said to manifest on the death of certain spiritual leaders, including the 19th century French Carmelite nun Saint Therese. These relics were said to smell strongly of violets and roses in India. In 1539, the corpse of Guru Nanak, which was being put over by rival followers, disappeared, and in its place were found crowning the were found crowning the disputed temple. Anyway, China was stuck gardens by plant. Hunters hit the Chinese church to cultivate in their gardens only days. Flowers of spiritual significance. Another beautiful pink lily. It's called the Lori Legia. This is the beneficial flower. Looks like a typical rose. Oh wow, I love this orange one. Chrysanthemum petal. Oh no, Cyrus is knocking around my oil oh, juice. I have to go see what he's done. Oh shit. Okay, so. I'm sorry guys, I just want to see what he's. bombing frame guys Now we got another one called 
my tray. What's in my big ass tray? Should there be the heading of this? I don't know if you can see this big ass mobile tray of mine. There's four tiers to it. Four books, floral books. Island Diary of a Year on Easedale by Garth and Vicky Wait. This is one of my favourites. So, gorgeous. It's the Aussie version of the Edith Holden. Oh, British. Copyright Vicky and Garth Waite, 1985. First published in Great Britain in 1985. Yes. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the writing. You can even like use that as collage rip it up. <laughs> That's if you're not ironing. Jesus Christ, I just can't find myself to do it. I can't. Unless I scan it, then I can do it. So it's January. It's not beautiful. It's images. Oh my gosh. Absolutely stunning. Little birdies. Love all that bushery with that writing. It's like Edith Holden. But it's just not ivory yellow. February. Gone from here, maybe I used it. So you can see how beautiful that little look, and even the other side, you know what I mean? Because it's got the nice writing and it's got those little pictures there, they still look pretty. So that's going to help me be able to tear at it because I've sort of started. If I can do one page, I'll try to do another. Cyrus, leave Boss alone. It's gonna scratch your pretty little nose. Your white pretty nose. November, that's when all my three children were born, but there's month of November and it's a little bit December the Christmas month. It's a pretty angel Diary of the Year on Easter. Gar and Vicky Wait. W A I T E. There we go. Next one Book of Gardens. I, I like to look at that because sometimes it's some nice looking colours. Cyrus, stop it. So this is from the early 80s. These are thin glossy I like them. It's definitely this thing. Just want to look up the year. I was wrong. 
1960. This is vintage. It's actually past 50 years, which means it's an antique, isn't it? Vintage is 50 and under, is it? Up to 50. It always a past 50 is vintage. And up to 100 is antique. I'm not sure. But look at that for colour. I love that. That will look lovely painted over, wouldn't it? Oh, jeez. Here's his new picture, didn't it? Cyrus! Stop it! Sit down! Sit down! You think he's big bum felt that's me? I'm going to have to see if he moved you. I hope he didn't move you. Pillows there and gauge whether or not you've been shoved over, unceremoniously shoved over by my dog. Okay. I'm expecting my Jeffrey Star makeup. It's a new palette, orgy. And I didn't have to order from America to get it. There's an Australian uh, retailer called Black Swallow that sells them, thank God, because I don't have to pay GST, which is, uh, so if something's worth $100, we have to pay 10% GST on it overseas, plus not to mention. Shipping is usually free with Jeffree Star, even if you buy overseas, if you spend a decent amount. Or they might charge about 15 US, but that's not really. Anyway, getting back to this, I really like the texture of how it's thin. It's not the thick gloss. Um, you can even use these black and white images. Love the pictures. Of... It's kind of like, it's not a true matte. There's a little bit of, it looks silky. Let me open the door for the silky baby. You just should be little, but no, no, you should be little. Okay, who's got an Australian Bull Terrier? Or any Bull Terrier? Okay, beautiful dogs. Even these black and white ones are nice, like on this side, you've got. Beautiful colour and oh, it's coloured there. It's lovely. You can use that as well. Or here, it can be folded there. Black and white sometimes looks nice too. Oh, that's cute. Um, these green pages are awesome too. With the illustrations. Yeah. Yeah, this is called A Book of Gardens from House and Garden, edited by Peter Prince. It's 1960. I just hope I'm in frame. This is another one of my favourites. We're halfway there. England is a garden. What I might do, stop here. And go to uh, part two. That way I can see if I've been out of frame so I don't waste my time filming the rest. So we will check this book out next. Thanks guys. Bye.